Hi, Jeff Higley with Hotel News Now. We're here at the 38th Annual NYU Hotel Investment Conference in New York, and with me is Paul Sacco, the President and Chief Development Officer of TPG Hotels and Resorts. Paul, welcome. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Well, a new gig for you. Yeah. Uh, you were named President uh, late April, right. so President and Chief Development Officer. Correct. Yeah. That's kind of an interesting combination. It is. How does that work it for is. you? It what's is. the What's the idea there? Well, um, the idea really is for me to help lead the company from a strategic perspective as the president of the company um, and be out there and very visible with the industry, with our investors, etc. Um, and more aligned with the operating side of the business than I had been in the past. But the uh, chief de retaining the chief development officer title uh, really just conveys the fact that we're still very focused on growth and growing in the right way and continuing to do deals. So uh, that's something that I've been uh, closely involved with with my whole career. So uh, I'll continue to do that as well. You said you worked for a lot of people, including Mike, uh, you know, obviously an industry icon. Can you look back at those people that you work for? Now that you're a president of a company, what's, mm -hmm. the, what's like the common element that you've learned from them that you're going to apply in this role? Yeah, yeah I, I think that the best leaders um, and people that I've worked for that, uh, that have helped me improve um, have, have operated in a manner where they allow the best in an individual to come out. Um, they're not trying to force something out of someone. They're, they're really taking what someone's natural skills are and giving that, instilling confidence in that person to let those skills evolve. Let's turn the tables a little bit and look at the company itself. TPG, 60 hotels. What? What appeals to you, what, what about TPG appeals to you? Yeah, so I've known uh, Jim and Betty Prakashanti for a long time, um, before Starwood, and then uh, when at Starwood, uh, we did a lot of business together, and uh, Rob Levin as well, our chief investment officer, I've known him for a long time too. Uh, we worked together at US Franchise Systems, and I've just always liked the way that they operated. Um, they, they really haven't had you know, any specific uh, it's a private company and you know un unlike a public company they, they haven't had any specific number of hotels that you know we need to be um, it's really been about doing really good deals and being involved with hotels and partners where we think that all the ingredients lead towards success so the key for us is that um, as an operating company, we see things through the owner's lens. We grew up, it's a second generation company, um, we grew up buying hotels, some of them we bought you know, all on our own, some of them we bought with capital partners, but really as an owner operator who invested in hotels. And over the last five years or so, we've really evolved into that plus being a third party operator. So you have that vast uh, approach, uh, the different models, if you will. What's your preferred model? Would you rather be a third-party manager? Would you rather have sliver equity? Would you rather be a JV? How yeah. Does it yeah, no, I think um, it's it's a little bit of both, and I think for most of our competitors, it's it's a little bit of both, um, and it really just depends on the deal. Mm -hmm. So. Um, We'll invest in a hotel uh, because we like the hotel, uh, because we like the deal. Um, there are certain models where the capital partner wants the operator to have uh, an investment in the hotel as well. Um, and we'll continue to do that. We have the resources to be able to do that. Sometimes it uh, aligns interests. We like to think that with us, uh, whether we're a straight third party operator or we are an investor in a deal, um, because of our upbringing, if you will, where we're operating that ho the hotel the same way uh, regardless. What makes the select service segment something that, uh, that that's appealing to, to a company like yours? Yeah, um, I mean there's some great brands in that space and in markets where uh, it's a more transient oriented market and uh, there's great amenities around the hotel that you're doing, you, know, you have a select service hotel and uh, it's an efficient model and um, you know the, the guests may go out to eat anyway, or um, there's not a ton of uh, group business that's right in that area. It's more of a transient-oriented area. Uh, those the select service model can be very favorable from a basis perspective and an operating model perspective mm -hmm. in those types of markets. So you said uh, earlier that you know you've, it's never been focused about on the number of mm -hmm. hotels in your portfolio. 
But is there a magic number? Is there a, a size that you need to get to for critical mass or whatever you want to call it yeah. for success? No, I, I think actually at, at you know, being around 60 hotels, the infrastructure um, becomes such that you have your, your operating platform set up in a way that it can very effectively take on new hotels. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the regionals are set up appropriately and you know, it's, it's, it's largely hotel staff on site that you're hiring when you take on new hotels. And um, there's, in our business, there's natural attrition when uh, hotels get uh, bought and sold. And sometimes a hotel might get sold to an owner operator and fiduciary responsibility. You know, you, you, you're, you're often unencumbered uh, by management on a sale. So there's some natural attrition and our goal is just to keep adding really good hotels. But uh, being as large as we are today and having established the infrastructure that we have in place today, um, I wouldn't say that there's a magic number. I think that uh, you know, we'll continue to grow and uh, probably uh, you know, grow at a faster pace than we, than we, um, than we have attrition. You know. How about the other side of the coin, Paul? Challenges certainly there are headwinds in the industry. What's the biggest challenge or set of challenges for TPG today? Um, you know, I think that the the challenges for the industry, um, you know, they're, they're challenges for everyone, but they also present for a company like TPG. Um, I think present some opportunity as well. So I think. Um, um, we're, we're bullish on the next couple of years. We think that uh, things continue to be strong. Um, and if you're very uh, thoughtful about the markets that you enter, whether you're building a hotel or buying a hotel, and you really understand the environment in terms of new supply, uh, uh, demand sources, and other trends in each market, you, know, you can make smart decisions and there can be a lot of good opportunity. I think. One of the things about TPG that, uh, that not everyone has been fully aware of is frankly how, how prolific in the industry we've become and how large we've become. Um, because of what we discussed earlier in terms of being a more quiet giant uh, several years ago, uh, when we started uh, being more visible over the past couple of years, it became apparent that uh, not everyone knew that we were 60 hotels, that we had 17,000 guest rooms, coast to coast, et cetera. And uh, that's been an eye opener for some. Um, but the, the common theme that has remained is, is that the people that we have operated for, or the investors that we've operated on behalf of, um, have continued to be very satisfied with the results at their hotels. So our goal, TPG, today is to make sure that people are aware of what we've become and where we're going and that uh, we are in a position to provide our services from a management perspective uh, to a wide array of investors. And uh, we're a, a, very, a very viable option in that regard. Yeah. Well, I must admit, I was a little surprised when I look, looked it up to find that you had 60 properties. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. so you have been kind of uh, yeah. you know, on the sidelines, if you will, but yeah. making the emergence now. Yeah. So, Paul, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you for the information. Yeah, I appreciate uh, you having me. It's great to see you, and it's great to spend some time. Great. Best yeah. of luck to you and TPG. Thanks. Same to you.